Hey YouTube, today we're gonna to go over how to save data into a database with the Node.js API. So the database I've chosen for today's video is DynamoDB, which is a managed NoSQL database in AWS. We're gonna go over how to set up a DynamoDB table and create a service account that's used by our API to connect to the DynamoDB table and then we're going to update our get and post methods from the previous video to connect to DynamoDB. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna start by creating a new DynamoDB table up in AWS. So from the AWS Management Console home, in the upper left-hand corner, if you click on services, you can access DynamoDB under database. So let's go ahead and click on that. If you don't have any tables inside of your AWS tenant, you will see just a blank Amazon DynamoDB with a big blue create table button in the middle. So let's go ahead and click on that. And let's give our table a name of node.js API. And for a partition key, we're gonna use a string type and just pass an ID. Uh, partition key needs to be unique. Uh, we're not gonna bother adding a sort key. Everything else here can remain as the defaults. Go ahead and click create. Okay, so now that our table is created, we need to create a service account that our API is going to use to access the table. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. Drop down services again, and then click on IAM under security, identity, and compliance. IAM stands for identity and access management, and this is where we can create user accounts and policies uh, to allow our API to access the table. All right, so on the left-hand side, click on users, and we're gonna click add user. I'm gonna name my user Node.js API SVC. And we're going to check the programmatic access, but we're going to leave the AWS Management Console access unchecked. So let's go ahead and click Next for the permissions. Now, normally you'd want to add a user into a group with the policy attached, but since this is a service account, we're going to add the policy directly by clicking Attach Existing Policies Directly. Let's go ahead and click Create Policy. So we're going to drop down a service here, and we're going to find DynamoDB in this list. It should be towards the bottom in the left-hand column. Click on DynamoDB. And now we want to give all DynamoDB actions to our service account, but we're gonna restrict it down to just that table. So let's drop down the resources here. Under backup, we're gonna click add ARN. We can check the region and set that as a star. The table name is gonna be Node.js API and the backup name can be star. And we're more or less going to set this for the remainder of these five sections. So bear with me, I'll be right back. Okay, now that that's done, we can click on Review Policy in the lower right-hand corner. And let's give our policy a name. I like to start my policies with an underscore since they will pop them right to the top. And we'll call this Node.js API Policy. And click on Create Policy. Now we're gonna be dropped back into the Policies window. We don't need this anymore, so we can close this tab and refresh our policies. Here's a new policy we've created. Let's go ahead and check that and click next for tags. You can leave this blank and click next to review. And finally click create user. Now the access key ID and the secret access key are the two pieces of information we're going to need in order to connect our API up into DynamoDB. So I'm gonna go ahead and show this. One thing worth noting is this is the only time that you can see both the access key and secret access key. So you wanna make sure to grab this information right now. But I'm gonna go into VS Code and right in the root of the project, I'm gonna create a new file called .env. And I'm going to paste a template in here of the different value, keys and values we're gonna need. It's like so. And let's save the key ID into AWS access key under underscore ID. And let's save the secret access key into the secret access key here. Now, in order to use these environment variables, we're going to need to install a new package into our API. So let's open a new terminal. And we're gonna issue the command npm install.env. Okay, now that .env is installed, we can close this. Head back into index.js. And then the very first line, we are going to issue the command require open parens.env.config. And what this library basically does is it will pull in the environment variables, which are stored in our .env file and then let us reference them such as process.env.node.env uh, is one popular one. We don't need that right now though. Okay, so now let's update our books 
post function to save data directly into DynamoDB. We can get rid of our dummy data now. So let's go ahead and select all that and delete it. AWS has created a library to access their services called AWS SDK. We're gonna to need to install that now. So open your terminal back up and issue the command npm install AWS hyphen SDK. Once that's installed, you can close your terminal. We're gonna import the AWS SDK into our books.js file. Const AWS equals require AWS SDK. And we need to set our configuration by saying aws.config.update. And then we're gonna pass in an object. We're gonna set the region to process.env.aws underscore default underscore region. Set the access key ID to process.env.aws underscore access key ID. And finally, set the secret access key to process.env.aws underscore secret access key. Just so like that. And now we need to create the document client, which is used to connect into the DynamoDB table. So const doc client. So const doc client equals new aws.dynamodb.document client. So now let's scroll down to the bottom of our file and we're gonna update our post function so we can actually send some book data into DynamoDB and, and verify that it ends up there. So let's get rid of our books.push because we don't have that data anymore. So let's say const params, which is going to contain the information we need to save an item into DynamoDB. Open a bracket, we're gonna set the table name to Node.js API like the table name we created. And we need to specify the item that's gonna be saved to the table and we're just gonna pass in the request body that's sent in. So req.body, just like we did before. Let's add some space after our parameters object. And now we can send this data to DynamoDB by saying doc client.put. And we're gonna pass in our params. And we're going to pass a callback function of error into an error function. This is gonna catch any errors that might have been thrown during the process of saving. Check to see if there is no error. We can send back a response status of 201, just like we did earlier. Dot send. Else, if there is an error, we're gonna pass back a status of 500, which is for internal server error. It means something went wrong on our side. And send a message of unable to save record. And let's pass back the error so we can see on the client side what possibly went wrong. Let's remove this res.status down from the bottom of the function. Save our handler. Open up the terminal and start the API if you have not done so already. Okay, head back into Postman. Let's try and save some data. Now we're going to use our post books. We can use exactly the same model that we used before. However, when we created it, we had specified the ID to be a string and not a number. So instead of passing just a four, let's change that to four with some quotes around it. Click send. And provided everything went according to plan, you should receive a 201 created status here. All right, so back in AWS, let's go ahead and go to DynamoDB under services. Click on tables on the left-hand side. Select our table, go to items. And here's the record that we created. So now just to seed some data, I'm going to change some things here and send another book. Say my new book two. Send that. Receive a 201 created again. And let's go back into our API. And now we need to update our get method to reference the data up in DynamoDB as opposed to the local books as well. So we're going to use the response data object we have here, but we need to set up the parameters that we're going to send up to DynamoDB before we set the response date as opposed to using the common array methods. So let's create a new params object here. Set our table name to Node.js API and leave this just as is for now. So now in our first if block, we're going to get rid of the books.find and if the request params come through, we're gonna say params.key with an uppercase, which is important equals open 
curly bracket, we're going to set the ID to request.params.id. And then likewise, under query ID, we're going to do the same thing. So params.key equals ID request.query.id. Okay, and so now we need to update the check to see if our response data is undefined. Instead of checking for the response data being undefined, we're actually going to check to see if the key is undefined. So if not params.key, which means we have not set a query up here, instead of setting the response data to books, we're going to await .client.scan, pass in the params, which has the table name, and then we need to append on the end of this promise to promiseify this scan function, which basically means we can use it as an asynchronous function. So if the key does exist, then we want to create an else statement here and say response data is equal to await doc client dot get pass in the params. And same thing, add a promise at the end. The key difference between these two functions that we're using is scan will grab every single record in the table, which is what we want for this instance since we haven't passed any queries through. And git will look at the query that we've set under the key here and it will only pull back that one object. So let's go ahead and save this and test it. Head back into Postman under Git Books. Let's leave no query parameters at the end here. Go ahead and click Send. Now you can see our model looks a little bit different, but we are getting the data back. Here are the items. You can see we have the book we created initially and our second book here. Let's go ahead and pass in a book number of five. Send. We have our single item back with five. And finally, let's check our query parameter and set the ID to four. And we have book number four come back. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share the video. I'm also live right here on YouTube every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. For channel updates or to get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev or join my Discord using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.